All right, hi folks, I'm Rich Folly. We're back at the Miami Book Fair 2016. It's Young Readers Day. So we're focusing on young adult literature. We're looking at middle grade, kids' books, graphic novels all day long. And we're right now sitting with Margaret Stoll, who's got a brand new uh, Black Widow book called Black Widow Red Vengeance. And you're also, I know, struggling. You've been drinking tea and honey in the background. Sucking honey packets. Yeah, but I, you're I doing really it. well. Yeah, you're doing great. Uh, you wouldn't let me shake your hand earlier, but you're doing great. Oh, little Jeremy. Yeah. Well, let's just talk about the fact that you now your second book in the in this Marvel series. You're getting to know this character so well. It's really rooted in the Marvel Cinematic Universe mostly. Talk about how that Scarlett Johansson movie character has influenced you, and then where you've been able to take the series, especially with the new character in this book. Well, I um, the books are rooted in the comics and the movie. The first thing I did was sit down and read all 50 years of comics yeah. through the fishnet tights years yeah. up into the empowered Scar Joe's version of um, Black Widow. And um, I do love working on Black Widow because whether or not girls read comics, they all relate to Black Widow from Marvel Cinematics. So I love strong girl characters. I raise strong girl characters. I am a strong girl character. So it's been really gratifying. It's also great because the ScarJo version of Black Widow is pretty flawed and also really strong. And I think it's a really good model to put out there. We don't have to be perfect. But we can still be strong. We can be disagreeable and strong. We can, um, we can be unpopular and strong, but we can be strong. And uncomfortable and awkward <clears throat> sometimes. I mean, I think that the character... Super awkward. Yeah, I mean, I think that you play with that really well. There's like a tightrope there, right? You turn drawing like this really strong character and, and not just flawed. I think that the people, I think you see a lot of flaw, but, but sort of, you know, sort of misconstruing situations or sort of stumbling through things. That seems to be the, the, the character that you're drawing right now. Yeah, Natasha is terrible at reading a lot of close interpersonal cues. It's really fun to put Natasha in a family context. She sort of has a big sister relationship to Ava, our uh, teen Red Widow, the legacy character. And it's amazing to see how much more facile Natasha is with, you know, spies from around the world than she is with a awkward emotional conversation. Yeah. So she'd rather fight her way out. Yeah, and this has been particularly interesting in this book because uh, Ava, the Red Widow, is now kind of coming into her own yeah. and is sort of, there's like a, a big sister quality to the relationship with, with Natasha, and yet she doesn't seem to always know how to handle that very well. No, I mean, it's one of the things you see with people who are taken away from their family at a young age. She's not used to siblings, Natasha, really Natasha or Ava. So it's really interesting. And I love having two female characters getting to work out, you know, a different kind of love relationship um, that's family. And I've always been really interested in a lot of models of love and connection um, when I write for young readers, because that's what our lives are filled with. You know, it's not just one dominating relationship. It's yeah. how we connect all over. You, we talked about this a little bit before. On this set, actually, at Book Expo America, I think it was Tony DiTerlizzi who yeah. was talking to you. And I remember you talking a little bit about then, about how you sort of took on the challenge of writing these characters and sort of the, the legacy element, the fact that there's been 50 years. How do you free yourself from some of that to sort of allow the fictional mind that you have, that you bring to the table, that's what you're so strong at, and let it sort of run? You free yourself by um, really being fearless, and you also free yourself by loving what you do. So when you're working, if you've done your homework and you know the character, your mind kind of melts away and you're just in this world. And I gotta tell you right now, you know, there's a lot of change and there's a lot of unrest in at least the American political climate, and there's nothing more reassuring than getting to work with your heroes who kick butt and yeah. are also women. So, I mean, it's really like a place of power for me. I'm writing Captain Marvel now, my debut Marvel comic, um, which will lead up to the Captain Marvel film, um, is going to start in December. And she is an infinite source of strength to me. Just keeps going, takes her licks, has setbacks, but knows in a kind of Captain America way what is right and is going to you know, stay the distance. Mm -hmm. I, I asked somebody else about this earlier, about the fact that strong, badass female characters, 
there's a there's a hunger for them in yeah. in, in the movies and books um, that doesn't seem to always be reflected in real life. Sometimes there's a threat. I mean, when it's not on film, or when mm-hmm. it's not on a screen, or when it's not in the pages of a book, sometimes it may be, and I'm, I'm making a jump here, but I want your opinion. It feels maybe more threatening. Talk to me about sort of Look, the real world versus what you see I, on screen. I work with two book festivals. I founded the two biggest teen book festivals in the country, Y'all Fest and Y'all West. Um, one of our <laughs> panels, we talked about unlikable women protagonists, and we ended up talking about Hillary Clinton you know, the whole time. And basically, like, can you be a strong, empowered woman and not take that kind of heat? In the real world. Even now, in the real world. And I will tell you what I see. I was saying, the reason we all come to Miami for this book fest is that there are no kids like this anywhere in the world. We get the best access to the best kids. And I met today and yesterday with all kinds of high school kids. And, And basically, I said to them in the room, look, I'm not worried about you guys. You guys are awesome. You are empowered. You know where it's at. You are, you are empathetic. You are strong. I can, I can talk to you, really talk to you, and you get it. Like, I'm fed up with the rest of us. The grown-ups are miserable to me right now. The kids, I was like, get going, guys. I can't wait 20 years for your books to get out there. Because I really do see something different in the, the, what I call the Tumblr generation. But these are kids who were never separated into red states and blue states because they had the internet from the time they were born. Mm -hmm. And you see a really different, facile, uh, adaptive mindset. That's really interesting. So in 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 the way that we now talk about rural and urban, those walls are sort of breaking down. No, I don't see it. Yeah, that's really And the kids in the classroom, I sit there and I say, look, don't be confused. The powerful person in this room is not me, it's you. You're the person we're trying to sell the comics to, the movies, download the tunes, and you're the people who will be generating it. And now more than ever, you have platforms. Marvel hires artists from DeviantArt. Mm -hmm. People get jobs from fanfic. You can work on a TV show based on the jokes you post on Twitter. That is reality. Yeah. So don't be afraid. The world needs those voices. That's a, probably a very powerful response to the kind of words. They hear it. Yeah. They hear it. A and lot of them, the it's not even a matter of them hearing it. It's just sort of they, they live that life very naturally now. Yeah. Like I'm amazed that like I have four children. Uh, these aren't skill sets necessarily that they have. They just naturally gravitate to being able to edit and create and write and publish. But it's not even just their tech skills. It's the flexibility of their thinking. Yeah. They're used to multiple perspectives. Right. They're used to a narrative that can take all different shapes and formats. And it's this like truly interdisciplinary and multi-POV perspective. They're amazing people. Yeah. I feel so good about that. We've destroyed our planet. We have no resources to give them. But I'm not worried about the fundamental humanity of that generation. We are, we are not doing our job on an emotional, social level as adults, they are so much more evolved than we are. That's so encouraging. Yeah. Uh, I could talk about that for the next half hour because we all need more of that kind of talk right now. So go home and listen to your kids and you will feel better. That's what I tell everyone. I do every day. You're right about that. Um, Let's talk about, too, you have a new series that you're working on. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, It's called... uh, I was gonna get. I was gonna say Rolls Royce, but it's Royce Rolls. Oh my gosh! I have literally never spoken about this. Really? You're the first. You okay, are. Folks, you did your prep. breaking news. Breaking news. We have Royce Rolls, and actually, yeah. it's a cool thing because Freeform is allowing this sort of. I mean, you're in this cool family now, right, with Disney, but yeah. with Freeform, there's this that's multiple synergy, my friend. That's right. It's it. There does seem to be though. It does seem to benefit the artists when you can do it the right way. Talk a little bit about this new series and the fact that all these kids in this reality show have car names, which I think yeah. is really wonderful too. Why don't you tell us about yeah, it? Basically the idea, I think that everyone who lives in LA has at least one LA story. And this is mine. And um, I'm not, I've never been really good at being a girl, LA style. I, I never look right. And basically I woke up one morning and saw another, you know, reality television family story on the news. And I was like, oh my gosh, I wouldn't last five minutes in a family like that. And then I started laughing. So basically for fun, I started writing a story about what it would be like if I was born into a reality television family, which I can tell you is the least likely fit (laughs) in the world. So the Royce family, Mercedes Royce, their matriarch believes in aspirational naming. So it's Mercedes, Portia, son Maybach, daughter Bentley Royce. 
who are like a fading reality show family and Bentley just wants to go to college. She doesn't want anything to do with the family. And that is not a thing that's going to happen. Yeah. So, you know, madcap adventures ensue. It is just funny, which is a thing I don't get to do that much. And I don't think we see um, in YA that much. It's yeah, you, just a really funny book. I did see you comment somewhere, though, that this is the most, you've never laughed so hard while writing a book. Oh, yeah. It's, it's been hilarious. And it's been really fun with Freeform because those are my good friends. And we're always messing around with secret projects over there. Um, more to come on that. And, and this is April 2017. Yeah. We should tell everybody. So it's not that far away. No, this April is coming out. It's sort of my stealth project. Yeah. Well, it isn't stealth anymore, folks. Yeah. We've you broke, broke the news it. here. You yeah. broke the news. Uh, well, we're very excited about that. Thank you. And uh, I think that I'm always impressed by how many things you guys seem to juggle, especially you folks over there who are like Owen Colfer writing the Iron Man series and doing everything else that he does and you writing the books that you've always written. Plus now the, Mar the Captain Marvel. It's beyond that though. There's like an ability to juggle a lot of this and it seems to be you really thrive on, on doing a lot at once. Yeah, I think I, well, I, my background is video games and I'm used to this sort of daily deadline thing. Mm -hmm. So I just, I need to have a hand in a lot of pies. Yeah. Well, you're doing a great job. Thank you. And I, I'm excited about the newest Black Widow, obviously, but also everything else, the Captain Marvel series, That's the Royce so roles, much. everything happening. Good luck with all that. Thank and thank you. you so much for joining us. Thanks.